Well, it's guest time here on the Golf Kingdom, and JoJo Gentry has her Go JoJo Go segment. I can't wait to see who her guest is. Hey, Rob, it's a pleasure to be with you on the Golf Kingdom today. Well, it's great to have you, JoJo. And you've got Brittany Lincecum as a guest, one of the nicest players in the LPGA Tour. I can't wait to hear what you're going to talk about. All right, <laughs> Brittany Lincecum in Evansville, Indiana, for the Deaconess Women's Golf Classic, the 25th year. We're so honored to have an LPGA pro like you come to the Tri-State and hang out with us. Yeah. You know, have you seen an all women's golf tournament like this before? Never in my life. This is incredible. And to get this many women to come out to support such a wonderful event, um, it's just gonna be a great day. I can't wait. So describe some of the personalities of these women <laughs> you've seen already. <laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, uh, Sharon is by far my favorite so far. She's just, every woman out here just wants to have a good time. Like they don't really care about how their golf game is or, you know, guys are very focused and, and want to shoot a good score, but these women are literally just here for a good time. And uh, that's what it's all about, raising money for a great cause and having fun. Yeah, you know, this is a tournament that has a very special cause for women across the tri-state. Mm -hmm. We're on track to raise millions of dollars for women in need who need screenings, mammograms, especially for those who aren't insured and mm -hmm. who need them. We've gone to rural areas. so. Um, and you know, help these women out. Yeah. So what do you think a tournament like the Deaconess Women's Golf Classic does for not only just golf here in the Tri-State and women here in the Tri-State, but kind of sets a tone for other tournaments that could be done like this? Absolutely, you know, my grandmother passed away of breast cancer, so this is really near and dear to my heart, and early detection is very key of uh, fighting these kind of cancers, so um, I think it's wonderful what you guys are doing here. You know, it's, it's raising money for uh, people who might not be able to afford to go get their mammograms, and again, early detection is key, and um, I think, you know, having events like this is really, I think you said they raised over $3 million uh, which is incredible. So it's, it's cool to see what you guys are doing. And obviously, of other events, you know, hopefully they see this and, and want to do this as well and, and just help their communities out. It's great. The 25th year for this tournament raises money for women who are in need of mammograms or screenings free provided across the tri-state. Yeah. Um, you shared a lot about your experience with all of these women here today. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, you said that you don't practice. And we're talking about the building blocks of your game. It's kind of a shocker. So tell me why you don't practice when you're a pro. Yeah, you know, it's so funny that people always ask me that. And I say I don't like to practice. I just don't like to go to the driving greens, the chipping green, the putting green, like your practice facilities. I love to play. Like I would love to go out and play with these women and um, hit shots on the golf course. That's kind of where I do my practicing. But even if I'm home for a week, I'll probably play golf one time. So it's really not that much practicing. But um, everybody's different. Some girls need to practice, you know, six, seven hours a day and really grind out their game. And me, I, I go fishing. And and, and play with my new puppy. So <laughs> everyone has a different strategy and uh, this way just works for me. You mentioned that you feel like you just kind of have a gift for mm -hmm. understanding the game and having a feel for just getting out there and getting into a groove. Mm -hmm. um, how would you describe that relationship you have with this sport? Yeah, I'm super lucky. There's so many girls on tour that hate how little I, ha I have to practice to <laughs> still be good at this wonderful game. So, um, but yeah, you know, it's it just comes naturally. Uh, I've, I've had a natural talent ever since I started playing when I was nine and uh, just been super lucky with not having to practice, you know, six, seven hours a day and can kind of just go out and, and figure, I'm, I'm a field player. So I just kind of feel my way around the course and uh, kind of figure it out as I go. Now you were homeschooled as a teenager, mm -hmm. and so you got to spend, I assume, a lot of time on the golf course mm -hmm. building your game. How would you describe just the building blocks of your game growing up and learning how to delve into that relationship you have with golf now? Yeah, so my dad started me with my two older brothers when I was nine and um, just fell in love with it right away. I think I like driving the golf cart more than anything, but um, just being with my family on the golf course, there was nothing better. And um, just from there, it kind of progressed where we would you know, do some junior tournaments, take one lesson or so here, here or there. And um, just over time, I just really fell in love with it more and more. We did home homeschooling and then turned pro out of high school and I've been a pro now for 15 years so I've been super lucky and, and blessed with uh, all the talent that I've had and success and um, it's been awesome. And you're expecting a baby girl yeah. here in just a couple months. Four months, yeah. Wow, wow. So how <laughs> exciting is it to possibly imagine that you could have, you know, 
the opportunity to raise a daughter mm. and potentially have the kind of success you have. <laughs> yeah. Maybe not in golf or it could be out of golf. Yeah, the sky's the limit for sure. You know, we're going to put her in all kinds of sports and just kind of see what she takes a liking to. Obviously, my husband and I both play golf. We would love for her to at least play on some type of a social level. But um, obviously, if that doesn't happen, we're, we're not going to force her to do anything she doesn't want to do. But um, just the thought of having a girl or future LPGA player, it's, it's kind of cool. So we're very excited. You've been 15 years as a pro. Mm -hmm. How much longer do you envision continuing this <laughs> professional career? Well, I thought I was only going to make it about 10 years, to be honest. So we're way past that. So who knows nowadays, you know, it's uh, since getting our new commissioner, Mike Wan, a few years ago, um, there's more tournaments, there's more money, there's more exposure, TV exposure, and um, the tour is just getting bigger and better. So it's, it's going to be so hard to just walk away from. But, um, you know, my daughter will travel with us. You know, my mom and dad are going to be helpful and we have wonderful daycare on tour. So um, there's no reason to not keep playing. So we'll keep going. Awesome. Anything else you'd like to add? No, I think that's good. All right, cool. Thank Thanks. you. <laughs> Jojo, that was a great segment with Brittany Lincecum. I look forward to more Go Jojo Go from you in the future and can't wait to see what you bring our viewers next. And be sure you check out the LPGA Tour at LPGA.com. There are some great players out there, including Brittany Lincecum, who's been one of the top Americans for a long time. So if the LPGA Tour is coming to a town near you, be sure to go out and check out some of the best women players on the planet.